Hello all, I'm Sai and you're watching The Book Dragon. In today's video, I'm bringing to you my August reading wrap-up. In August, I did a reading challenge in which I finished reading 30 books in 30 days. This is not a reading challenge in which I took part in that was conducted by anyone else. I just wanted to do this on my own for myself. To be even more accurate, I finished reading 34 books and not just 30 books in the first 30 days of August. I'm filming this on the 31st of August so that everything comes around together well. So before getting into the books directly, I'll tell you guys why I did this challenge, the challenges I faced while doing it, at the same time some good things which I experienced while doing it as well. If you're here to just hear my thoughts on the 30 books which I read, I've given the timestamp in the description so that the video is divided into chapters. You can definitely skip to the wrap up and just see all the books alone. But if you're staying here in order to hear me speak, let's get to that now. Okay guys, first I'll tell you why I did this reading challenge for myself, okay? The only reason and main reason why I wanted to do this is because I was not feeling motivated to do anything at all and it's been the same for the past 5 to 6 months. It's never been like this at all for me, any time in my life as far as I can imagine and remember. I just wanted to break that rut and get into something in a very immersive and active way so I thought that the best way to do that was to read as much as I could in just a single month's time and I should say that it has helped me so much, okay? I've become a lot more active and my willpower has obviously increased. I can sense it and feel it for myself while I'm doing a lot of stuff. And another add-on for this challenge for me was that the workload in July that I had was so tremendous, okay? It was not like a less workload at all. The first week or so of the challenge was nice, but after that, my workload just got so much more than it used to be and I had to tackle my work as well as this one at the same time. If you're new here and you don't know me already, I have a full-time job and I'm just doing this on the side for my own satisfaction. So that comes as a priority for me and only with the leisure time and free time that I get after that I can do this thing. With that, I managed to finish this challenge because of which I just feel so much proud right now. And another thing which I want to tell you guys is that if you're thinking of doing this challenge please don't push yourself so hard at all because if you think like you want to read 30 books in 30 days it is definitely going to feel really huge and very difficult to do as well so the thing which i did while i was doing this challenge was to finish one book per day that was my goal each and every day and successfully at the end of each and every day i found myself finishing at least one book i'm sure if i had imagined that i should read 30 books in 30 days i would have not been able to finish this challenge having said that there were moments during this reading challenge when i felt totally exhausted and just want to give up but i just pushed myself forward because i wanted to finish this thing and as a result of it, I also finished completing four different series inside this reading challenge itself. I'll just tell you guys what the series are so that if you're interested to hear my thoughts on them, you'll be able to see them elaborately in the clips forward. The first one is the Pony and Selvan series, okay? I just wanted to finish it before watching the movie. After Pony and Selvan, I finished reading White Sand by Brandon Sanderson, which is a graphic novel series. Then I finished one series which many of you guys have been asking me to read for at least the past two years, and it was the Percy Jackson series. Yeah, I finished reading Percy Jackson. And at last, another series which I finished was to watch another adaptation again. It is the summer series by Jenny Han, which has three YA contemporary romances. And I should say, all of these series were really good, and Pony and Selvan in specific was completely out of the world for me. And in this video, you'll be seeing me in different forms because I was sure that I'll not be able to sum up all the 30 books in a single wrap-up video because that will just completely exhaust me. So at the end of each and every week, I did a separate wrap-up clip and the combination of all of them is going to just occur in this video in a chronological order. And if you're planning to do this 30 books in 30 days challenge, just keep in mind that you have to finish one book per day and don't see it huge as 30 books in 30 days because it will tire you out. So yeah, I've said everything that I wanted to say and without any more further ado, let's straight away dive in. So first, I'm going to talk about all the books that I read in the first week of August, guys. I managed reading a total of 8 books from the 1st to the 7th and I should say that most of these books were really amazing and I did not expect to love them this much. I thought that it will be a bit more pressurizing to read one book per day for the whole month but this first week has been really good for me and I'm very much optimistic that I'll be able to finish this task which I've taken for myself and most of the books which I read in the first week are part of a series so I'm not going to talk about the books in the order which I read them but the books inside the same series together so that it makes a bit more sense. So the first two books which I finished are the second and third books inside the Percy Jack series which are the sea of monsters and the titans curse many of you guys have been wanting me to read the series for the past two years and i was not that much interested in reading it finally i started reading the series in march and i read the first book alone after that i did not continue on with the series because i was not that much invested in it i listened to both of them as audiobooks so it was much faster and easier for me to read them since they are also middle grade books they are short in length and i like the writing style of the author as well as the voice of the characters so much the narrator i should say has done a great job for both of these books i can say that of both the books the titans curse is my most favorite apart from that one thing which i just love about the series 
least so far is that Rick Riordan has put in a lot of effort to show how much difficult it is for kids with dyslexia as well as ADHD to do just normal activities that every child does. I'm not a person who's familiar with anyone that has dyslexia or ADHD but while reading this one I was able to understand what are all these struggles that people with both those problems have to go through even with very menial tasks and of all the things one thing which is just keeping me hooked to the series is the voice of Percy okay. Percy is like super sarcastic, cheeky and also very sassy each and every time. I can say that most of the time while I was listening to both of these books, I was continuously laughing out loud because of some dialogue or other the characters keep on entering and most of these dialogues which make me smile are those of Percy. I'm hoping to finish the last two books inside the series also by the end of this month itself. Let's just wait and see if it's going to happen or not. Since there's so much more to come in this video, I hope I'll be able to finish it soon. So these two are the first two books which I've ended up finishing in the first week of August and I should say that I enjoyed them completely. I rated them both four stars. The next three books which I finished actually form a series altogether and all three of them are graphic novels. It is the White Sand series by Brandon Sanderson which is also part of his Cosmere. Since I'm working full time it's not always possible to finish huge chunky books in just one single day. So I opted for the series and I should say that it was a great decision because even though it's a graphic novel series there's a lot to read in this one because it's from Brandon Sanderson and the man just loves writing. Here we follow this group of people called Sand Masters whose magic is actually made by manipulating sand and taking the energy from it. In the beginning of the series what happens is there is this kind of tribe which comes in attacks the sand masters and most of them end up dying so in order to rescue all the other people who have survived at the same time not lose their art of sand mastery they have to go and get the support of all the other kinds of professions as the author calls it inside the series since it is from Brandon Sanderson there are two aspects of the series which I just completely enjoyed the first one is obviously the magic system the man knows how to write really interesting as well as very complex magic systems but they are not very difficult to understand at all there is a lot of rules at the same time there are so many creative pathways that the characters can take the way in which he frames those rules and binds all the things that are happening inside the story within those rules is just awesome. The second thing which I enjoyed was the politics, okay? This series entirely is very political and I should say that the way in which he has written the politics is also very intricate. There's a lot of politics, okay? More than anything, I can say that this series is solely focused on the politics and how that politics can be used properly by our main character Kenton here in order to save his profession which is sand mastery. If you're interested in reading a really well-built hard magic system at the same time, if you want a lot of political intrigue in what you're reading, I highly suggest you to read this. But keep in mind even though they are graphic novels there is so much dialogue and there is so much storytelling in this i rated the first two volumes four stars each and the third volume five stars since i'm very much in mood to read a series right now i went forward and started another series also and it is the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy by douglas adams I've actually read the first book inside the series two years back. Here we follow a main character, Arthur, who also lives in Earth just like all of us. But what happens one day is the government authorities come and try to tear down his house. So in order to save his house, he just lies in front of a bulldozer and does not leave them tear it down. A spaceship comes and they just destroy Earth as a whole in order to make way for an intergalactic highway. It is very absurd and funny in its tone and it's very nonsensical at most moments. But if you like absurd, weird stories, I'm sure that you will definitely love this. It doesn't make sense as a whole. But if you want to have a really fun time at the same time experience something which is very very different from anything that you've read i'd highly suggest you to read this i'm also planning to finish this series also by this month itself let's wait and see if it's going to happen or not the next book which i managed finishing is the third book inside the pony and selvan series by kalki and i should say that by far this month this is the best book that i've read because i did not expect this one to be this good i know that the series itself is very amazing but i did not expect this third book to surpass all my expectations whatsoever i think of all the books that i've read so far this year this is the most well written i'm planning to continue on with the series this month also so I think the next two books inside the series will surpass this one for sure. It's very difficult to say what the plot of Pony and Sylvan is about because there are a lot of stuff that are going on and it is very difficult to explain people what's going on and what is the main plot of the series. Even though there's a main plot, there are like so many subplots which are going on that come and coincide together in order to make that main plot possible. This is a kind of series which you can read and understand very easily. But if you want someone else to tell you the story and understand, it'll be very difficult for you to understand. At the same time, it'll be much more difficult for the person who's trying to explain it to you. It is written in such a way and I just completely enjoyed it. So no doubts, five stars for this one. The last book which I finished in the first week is a children's book and it is The Kaiman by Maria Eugenia Manrique. It is about this man who finds this really tiny alligator one day by the riverside. He brings it to his home and grows it with him for the rest of his life. It is just a very cozy little children's book so there is not that much of a story for adults if you ask me. But if you are looking out for a very quick and short read, you can definitely try this. I rated this one 4 stars and that's it for the first week. Let's see how much I managed reading the second. Okay guys, now we'll see the 8 books that I read in the 2nd week of August. 
I should say that the second week was not as good as the first week because I've been reading one book at least each and every day and that kind of tired me out physically as well as mentally but I managed reading eight books again and I should say all the books which I read in the second week were really really good in each and every way possible I managed reading a total of three physical books and the rest were audio books and ebooks and all the three physical books that I'm going to talk about are non-fiction books I wanted to start reading non-fiction in the second week itself because in the first week I did not read even one non-fiction I wanted to complement it in some way or the other so I just went forward and picked up some non-fiction so the first book which I finished is The Audacity of Hope by Barack Obama. I've been wanting to read this for quite a few years now and it has also been sitting on my shelf for over one year. I also purchased the audiobook almost a year back so I just went forward and listened to the audiobook because it is narrated by the author himself. I'd suggest you to go with the audiobook also for this one because when an autobiography or a memoir is narrated by the person who has lived that life, it just enriches the experience of reading that book and I felt it completely in this one. There was only one aspect which I was expecting a lot while I was reading this book and it was the writing of the author. Because I know that Barack Obama is a great speaker, I've seen many of his speeches and I've been stunned by each and every one of them because he has a really good command over the language and the way in which he articulates it with the audience is very crisp and fresh always and that's one thing which I've always loved about his speech and that has reflected as such in his writing also. He doesn't just talk about his political life in this one but also chunks of his family life also. There are some pieces of his life story that have been told in this one which we see in Becoming also. So as a whole this was a really nice read for me except for some things that concern American politics because I don't have knowledge of it. I definitely loved it so I rated it 5 stars. The next one which I finished is Life's Amazing Secrets by Gaur Gopal Das. The same reason exists for this book also because I watched a lot of motivational videos by Gaur Gopal Das on YouTube and that's the only main reason I wanted to read this book also. I should say that this book was not as good as I expected it to be but for a debut book I think the author has done a really good job of writing it. Now if you are a person who has read a lot of self-help books or non-fiction books I don't think this book will be a great one for you because there is nothing new in this one that you cannot find in very famous self-help books but I found one thing which is very different about this book. The author explains each and every concept that he is trying to explain using life stories from his own life and there are also some fictional tales which he just concocts then and there in order to make us understand his point. I like that method because sometimes when concepts are displayed to us in the self-help books they are a bit difficult to understand and remember because self-help books are usually just how-to guides and when there are multiple steps it just gets confusing and it is not very easy to remember. Since he is taking each and every concept inside a story and presenting it to us in that way the stories are easily rememberable and because of that we will not forget the concepts also. He compares life to a car and talks about four wheels which need to be in balance in order for us to live a very happy and balanced life. The partitioning of the four wheels has not been done by the author equally here. Still it was really nice to read and it provided me a good break between fiction books. So if you are a beginner just go forward and try it. I am sure that you will like it and it will also be very easy to read as well as understand. I rated this one 4 stars. The next one is Be a Triangle by Lily Singh. This is definitely one of my anticipated releases for the year and I also did not buy this until very lately. I bought it and read it the next day itself because it was available for a great deal. I have read the first book by Lily Singh which is How to Be a Boss and I have recommended it so many times in the channel. If you have not read that book just go forward and read it I am sure you will love it in some way or the other. This was not as good as How to Be a Boss because it is very short okay it's not even 100 pages long. Still I should say this was the right book in the right time for me because I read this as the last book in the second week and by that point I was very exhausted because of my work as well as doing this but this book provided a great boost for me and it resonated with me so much and that's one thing which I always look forward to when I'm reading non-fiction books. If it resonates with me in some way or the other it's definitely going to stick with me for a very long time in my life and this book is something which just resonated with me very strongly. Lily Singh actually talks about gratitude, meditation practices and mindfulness more than anything in this one and the importance of that along with the hard work and dedication that we give to each and everything that we do. Now if you want a sample of how Lily Singh's writing is I'd suggest you to try this one. If you like this I'm sure you will like how to be a boss. Even if you don't like this one, I think you will like that book because that book is very unique and it is excellent in every way. This one is not as great as that one. Still, since it resonated with me so much at that point, I think it definitely has a very special space in my heart. I rated it 4.5 stars. Moving on to the audiobooks, I finally finished one series which some of you guys have been asking me to read for over the past two years and it is the Percy Jackson series by Rick Riordan. I finished the second and third books in the first week and I finished the last two books inside the series in the second week and I should say I completely enjoyed the series, okay? I think this series is the one thing which has made me laugh the most of all the books that I've read so far this year because it was very fun to read. I'm just sad that I did not read this when I was younger because I think I could have connected with the series a lot more compared to how much I connected with it right now and especially after 
finishing the series i'm definitely awaiting to see how the disney plus adaptation of that is going to come i know that people have been excited for that since the beginning of this year but i was not following it that much because i have not read the series but at this point i'm definitely sure that i will watch the series as soon as it gets released because i want to see how they have transformed this urban fantasy into an adaptation because it's very difficult to do without making it cringy the best thing i like about this series is the characters okay especially the main character percy he did not feel whiny or boring at any point at all and he is the one character who kept me hooked to the series from book 1 to the last book because each and every dialogue that percy uttered had some kind of an original tone which just made me laugh at multiple instances the sass and sarcasm the character has at such a young age is just awesome i want to read percy as an adult character and the amount of sass and sarcasm that he has when he is an adult because i think that will be far better compared to that which he has as a child and there is one character alone inside the series who felt heavily inspired from the harry potter series for me and it is annabeth annabeth sounded and felt so much like hermione because i could not see an original character there apart from that the series was just awesome and the way in which the greek mythology was tied in with the story was excellent i learned a lot of stuff about greek mythology only after reading the series and i'm very glad that i read it i have to thank you guys who have been asking me to read it because if not for you i would have definitely not read this at this point in my life i rated the fourth book four stars and the final book five stars and the last three books which i finished are e books and they are all three manga they are the first three volumes of the series called cell set work i don't remember the author's name right now and i don't also have it right now with me i'll display it on the screen and also down in the description you can check it out if you have kindle unlimited just go forward and read this manga i'm sure you will love it because i read three volumes of this because only three volumes are available on kindle unlimited and i rated each and every one of them five stars because they are just excellent okay the concept of this manga is that our human body is considered to be a world and each and every cell inside the body is considered to be its population and we have two main characters a red blood cell and a white blood cell and each and every discomfort or disease that happens in our body is taken as a chapter inside the manga and each and every disease is discussed as a plot inside the manga and it's just awesome at points it is very very cute and very witty if you like infotainment that is getting information while you are being entertained i'm sure that you will love this especially if you are in like 9th or 10th standard and if you are planning to choose biology in your 11th and 12th standard just go forward and try this i'm sure it will be helpful in multiple ways for you the thing which i said is the basic plot of the manga and the way in which you author executes it is very very awesome okay there is not one point during the first three volumes which i read in which i felt bored or not motivated to continue reading at all because it was just excellent if you have kindle unlimited you should go forward and try this i'm sure you will love it no matter who you are i've also been trying to make my brother read this because i'm sure that he will like it also i'm just sad that the entire series is not available for free in kindle unlimited but i'm going to try and make an effort to finish this series because i enjoyed it so much i think this is the best manga that i've read so far also so if you've not tried it yet just go forward and try it i'm sure you will enjoy it so those are all the books which i read in the second week let's wait and see what i'm managing to read in the third week because i'm filming this during the third week and it is going really good until now so i'll meet you after reading all those books so now i'm going to talk about all the books that i read in the third week guys that is from the 15th of august to the 21st the third week went very fast for me it seems like it just got over in a snap but i managed reading the most number of books until now only in the third week so i totally read nine books of which four are physical books one audio book and the last four are e books all of which are manga So starting with the physical books the first one which I managed finishing to read is The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman I've been wanting to read this for a few years now and finally I picked it up for this video I read this during the Independence Day holiday and it was really really fun okay I think I could have enjoyed this book even more if I had read it in the mid of winter compared to now because it is very chilly in its atmosphere and the way in which the author builds that atmosphere is also really nice I rated this one 4 stars but not 5 because in the second half of the book it felt like some things were slowed down and it got also boring for me at instances but the writing of the author just kept me hooked to the book continuously that's how i ended up finishing the book in a single day itself here we follow a main character nobody owens who lost his family because of a murderer named jack and accidentally he escapes from the home and ends up in a graveyard because of this the ghost inside the graveyard kind of adopt him and start bringing him up as a person how nobody's life is totally changed because he's grown up by ghosts and how his world is is the actual plot of this book i can say that it is really well built because it did not feel like anything that i've read before at all i cannot say that this is my most favorite neil gaiman book so far because i have liked some of his books more than this one that i've read before still this was a really delicious and cozy at the same time gothic read so as i said before i rated this one four stars The next book which I finished is Me Before You by Jojo Mars. I have also read this book for another video which will be coming out pretty soon in the channel. Just bear with me because I have some videos planned out and they are taking a bit of time for me to film. So here we follow our two main characters Lou and Will of whom Lou has just lost her job and because of this she is in search of another job and she ends up working for Will because Will is a quadriplegic because he has lost his ability to move easily like normal human beings because of an accident that occurred to him. And how their relationship develops from being an employee and an employer to friends and even more is the actual plot. 
of this book. I'll not say that this is completely a happy book or a sad book because it has both things equally proportioned by the author properly. I completely enjoyed the entire time I was reading this book and each and everything about this book just felt very fresh, original and also perfect for me because I could not think of any way in which this book can be made better because as such it is just perfect for me. There's also a sequel for this one. I think I'll be reading that one also pretty soon. Let's just wait and see if it's going to happen. This was such a lovely read and I rated it 5 stars. The next book which I finished is the best book that I've read so far this month and it is the fourth book inside the Pony and Selvan series. I've been overhyped for the series ever since I started reading it and trust me each and every book has lived up for its hype and even more for me. Especially this fourth book, it is the shortest of all the five books inside the series but the amount of things that happen here, the amount of twists that we see, the amount of revelations that it has at the same time the way in which it sets up the finale for the series is just epic, okay? Trust me, this is the most epic series that I've ever read. I'm just sad that most people who watch my videos don't know Tamil and because of that reason you cannot read it in Tamil but it is available in English so if you can please do go forward and try the series. I'm sure everyone who reads it will fall in love with it because the way in which the world is built, the way in which the characters are written, the characters, trust me these are the best characters which I've seen. Okay, I can say the amount of character building in this one is even better than that of Game of Thrones. It provides more of epicness than Game of Thrones or any other such English fantasy series provides without magic in any way and that's the thing which just astonishes me completely. By the time you're watching this video, I'm sure the summaries for the first three books will be out in Tamil as well as English. I'm not sure whether the summary for this one will be out or not, but if it is out, it will definitely be there in the description. I know that I've been raving about this continuously, but I cannot talk more about this without spoiling the other three books for you, so I'm just going to keep it as such here. If you can't guess by now, it's obviously a five-star book. The next book is Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman and only while filming this I'm able to realize that I almost hit a jackpot in the third week of August while reading all these books because except one or two books all others were just awesome in their own way and so was this one. I've actually watched the adaptation for this one on Amazon Prime before. I watched the first season, the second season actually in production. I did not see anything in this book that was not there in the show. But since it's a reading experience, it was completely new for me. And some things that the authors did here were just excellent. It also has a lot of footnotes here. So the basic plot of the book is that the Antichrist has been born on Earth. And in order to control his activities, there are an angel and a demon that are sent from heaven and hell in order to just monitor his progress. The angel is Azraphel and the demon is Crowley. And the Antichrist is to bring Armageddon to Earth and the world is going to be destroyed. And and formed again. That's the basic plot of the book and the authors have just played with it wonderfully okay. If you like witty humor, if you like good banter between the main characters that you see and not that much of romance when it comes to fantasy, I'm sure that you will enjoy this in each and every way possible. If you want to experience a very rich at the same time very wise and funny book that has a lot of magical elements and fantastical elements put into it, I'm sure that you will love this. Especially the footnotes were such a delight for me to read. I rated this one 4.5 stars. Now moving on to the one audiobook which I finished and it is The Summer I Turned Pretty by Jenny Han. I wanted to read this book just because of Jenny Han because I read her other trilogy which is the Laura Jean trilogy last year and I liked that series very much because it was really well written. The characters were not that awesome or anything but the way in which the author had written the series, the amount of effort that she has put in order to show this world of Laura Jean to us and how she sees the world was really nice to read from. And since the adaptation for this one also recently came out on Amazon Prime, I just wanted to read this. I will definitely watch the adaptation sometime but I'm not sure when. Here we follow our main character. Isabel who along with her mother and brother goes every summer to their mother's friend's house which is a beach house and they all stay there for the whole summer each and every year. But I cannot say that this book has a straight plot or anything because it is just incidents that happen in this particular summer for Isabel along with her family and some flashbacks from the past summers which were either good or bad and some instances which were just very normal for people who are out on a summer vacation. I will continue on with the series because the other two books are also really short in this one and I can finish the audiobooks in just one day. I rated this one 3 stars. Finally, the ebooks that I read in the third week are the four volumes of One Piece, which are from volume 8 to volume 11. And of the four volumes, I rated the eighth volume alone four stars and all the other three volumes five stars because I think this is the point during which series has pitched high for me because I'm enjoying it completely. And I've also binged all these four volumes continuously. So that says something about the series. I think I'll be reading more of this in the rest of the month and also in the following months for sure because the series has got a hang of itself and the way in which the author expresses the backstories of the main characters here is really nice. At the same time, each each and every character has something that they have to provide for the story. It's not like these are side characters and they just need to be there with the main character in order to do all these stuff. It is really made clear for us that the main character cannot do anything that he wants without the support of these side characters. And the way the importance of each and every side character is put a spotlight on and shown to us properly in some chapters is really nice. Especially there is this one character named Nami who's the navigator for our main character Luffy who's the pirate. In these four volumes, her backstory was the thing which was focused the most. And I think of all the volumes that are read so far inside the series, 
series these four volumes have been the strongest especially 9 10 and 11 were just awesome i am planning to make one piece themed videos also sometime really soon let's just wait and see if it's going to happen or not so yeah just as i said before the eighth volume was a four star for me and all the other three volumes were complete five stars and i'll meet you guys after the end of the four so okay guys we'll see the books which i managed to read between the 21st and 28th of august i should say that this fourth week has been the toughest for me compared to everything that i've been through in this reading challenge for myself and i should say that because i managed reading one huge book which is the end of a series and it took so much for me to do physically as well as mentally because i got so attached to that series and those characters and i am going to talk about it really really soon and because of that i was not able to focus more on physical books and i read only two physical books and all the others are either ebooks or audio books i'll talk about the two physical books first then we'll move on to the audio books and ebooks so the first book which i managed to finish is the restaurant at the end of the universe by douglas adams which is the second book inside the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy series there are totally four books in this one as i said before from my first week's wrap up i should say that this is not a series which i'm able to read fast because if i read it fast i'm not able to enjoy all the nonsensical and stupid jokes that the author makes up here i should say that this series entirely feels just like nonsense but it feels like super intelligent nonsense that we need to be so smart in order to understand everything that the author gives us i'm not that smart but i'm enjoying it totally ever since i understood that i want to read this slowly in order to enjoy it and understand each and every piece of humor i'm reading it very very slowly i'm planning to finish the series next month only but as of now i should say that i'm very much enjoying this because the writing style of the author even though very weird is super easy to understand it's not like he mixes things up and makes us feel confused he makes the nonsense that he writes as much comprehensible for us so that we don't get confused of what is happening where and especially the names that i see inside the series are very very different from anything that i've read before the whole experience of reading the first two books inside the series has been very unique on its own because just as i said many times before i have not read anything like this at all not just in books but also in other media like tv shows and movies it was definitely a delight to read and it took a lot of effort from me to enjoy it properly i'm sure that i'm going to continue on with the series and i rated this one four stars the next physical book is actually the last book which i managed to finish in the fourth week and it is the last and final part of the pony and selvan series by kalki i've been reading this series for the past two months and trust me it has been one of the best experiences that i've ever had in my life i can easily say that this has become my most favorite of all the series that i've read so far it's not just because i am from the culture and it is very close to me the series itself is super strong in each and every way possible if you are a plot driven reader trust me you're just going to eat this up totally because the plot is the entire point of the series and if you're a plot driven reader you're going to have a great treat if you start reading this it is something which goes on very very fast and so many things keep on happening it's a bit difficult to keep track of the things because so many things happen and there are so many subplots but it is not difficult to read and comprehend at all and one request which i have for you guys is that if you can read and understand tamil please read the series in tamil itself because i think the richness of the series cannot be presented as much as it is in tamil in any other language because we have so many words and root words in tamil which are not there in other languages and i think that's a great plus for this series and the way in which the author wheels his writing is just excellent only after finishing this i'm able to understand why there are so many ardent fans for the series because i myself have become one now by this time all four people in my family have finished reading pony and selvan so we are so much excited for the movie and i'm also very much excited to see how they have made this into two films because trust me it's not easy to say the story on screen even saying it as such in front of a camera and recording my thoughts is difficult because there is so much going on and you cannot miss anything because each and everything is of historical significance and it is closely tied with the culture and the characters if you let me i can just keep on talking about this for days and days so in order to cut it short here i just rated this five stars and trust me this is probably the best book that i've read so far in my life moving on to the audio books the first audio book is one by brandon sanderson and it is a stand alone adult fantasy novel and it is the emperor's soul and here we follow a main character shy who is kind of a forger forger does not have a bad meaning as in our world inside this world because forgers are those people who learn about the history of the things that are around them and they can manipulate and make anything to behave like something else by gathering memories from any other thing which has memories and transforming one thing into another in such a way our main character shy here is taken by the empire and she has to build up this personality for the emperor who's almost dead he's nearly in a vegetative state right now but his consciousness has not completely slipped out he's still alive so in order to make the people believe and in order to keep the empire strong many people try and make shy in order to build a consciousness or build a soul for the king hence it's called the emperor's soul there's not much i can say about this book since it's a novella i can surely say that since it's brandon sanderson the magic inside this one is extremely well defined and the way in which he uses those rules is just as amazing as always i tried listening to this twice before but i was not able to then because the audio book for this one is kind of like a dramatic narration but this time around i completely enjoyed it and i rated it 5 stars 
the next audio book is it's not summer without you by jenny han which is the second book inside the summer series i listened to the first book inside the series a week back and i should say that it was okay but it was not as good as i expected it to be but this one was a good improvement inside the series because i enjoyed the second book a lot more compared to the first book because there was more of a plot and character development in the second book compared to what was there in the first book by this point i've also finished listening to the final book inside the series and i should say that it is a decent series this starts off just a few days after the end of the first book and since it's the middle of the series i cannot tell a lot about it without spoiling the first book for you i enjoyed it quite a bit and the ending of the series was also quite good i'll talk about it later on in another clip so this was good and i rated it four stars moving on to the ebooks i managed reading a total of three ebooks of these the first one is a comic book and it is stories of birbal five in one edition by anant pai it is available for free in kindle unlimited if you're interested just go forward and try it and i highly suggest everyone who's looking out for books that can be read by kids to go for this one because it is very easy to read and just like most of the collections of Birbal and Akbar stories this one also had a lot of them and I should say the art style is a bit basic and it is very Indian so it was really nice to read in that way. I remember I've read a lot of Akbar and Birbal stories while I was a child and I've also watched many cartoons made from these two characters because they are very famous. It was just a quick and fun read for me so I just went forward and read it. I rated this one also 4 stars. And finally I managed reading two more volumes of One Piece which are volume 12 and volume 13. I should say that the series is just getting better and better ever since I read the 9th or 8th volume. Especially after the 10th volume, I should say that I am completely enjoying the series. Almost each and every volume that I am reading is easily a 5 star because there is so much action and so much depth for each and every character that is involved inside the story. The author also keeps on moving the series from one island to other as the volumes keep on moving and I am also reading it on the Manga Plus app if you wanted to know where I am reading it from. It is free but you can read each and every chapter only once, you cannot read more than once. Just as I said before, I am planning to do some One Piece specific videos because I know that many of you guys have enjoyed One Piece and have also been wanting me to read it. I am definitely enjoying the series a lot more and I am also reading it faster compared to how I read it in the beginning like 4 to 5 volumes. I am not sure whether I will be able to finish this series this year itself because it is very very huge and I just want to take it in slow and enjoy it completely rather than just rushing through it. I think by the end of this reading challenge, I will manage to read at least 15 or 16 volumes of One Piece. Let's just wait and see but as of now I am completely enjoying the series and I rated both of these volumes 5 stars each. So there's just two more days of the challenge left for me to complete. I believe that I'll be able to complete it properly. So I'll meet you guys after the end of those two days. Finally, we are at the last two days of this challenge, guys. So on the 29th of August, I've managed finishing one book alone and it is We'll Always Have Summer by Jenny Han, which is the last book inside the summer series. You might have seen that I finished the first two books in the past two weeks and I should say that this book was a really good ending for the series. It felt a lot more stereotypical in terms of young adult as a category, but as a whole, the series was well built because the author has a really good writing style. Having said that, I'm very, very sure that the Lara Jean series by the same author is far better compared to this one because it has a lot more elements style into it and the way in which the author narrates that story and shows the characters to us itself is very original. Here it does not feel that much original because there are so many cliche things that are added by the author but the emotions that play inside the story in order to move it forward are really pure and nice in their tone. So as a whole the series was nice but it was not as good as I expected it to be and I rated the third book also four stars. And at last, the final book which I read for this 30 books in 30 days challenge is a manga and it is the first volume of the Vinland Saga by Makoto Yukimura. This is also available for free on Kindle Unlimited. But the bad thing is that this first book was a great start for the series but all the other volumes inside the series are not available for free in Kindle Unlimited. I enjoyed the whole time I was reading this one. Everything about this was excellent in every way possible. This is actually just a fictitious story of the Vikings that is narrated in the form of a manga. And our main character here is Thorfinn whose father has died under the hands of the leader of a huge pirate crew. Only 10% of the first volume of the series happens in the present and the rest 90% shows us how the main character's father was killed and the way in which that is narrated and shown to us is extremely powerful. This is also kind of violent and graphic in its tone so if you are not comfortable with that kind of stuff I'll not recommend you to read this. Otherwise just go forward and try it. I'm sure that you will enjoy it. I rated it 5 stars. So yes guys that was my 30 books in 30 days reading challenge and I'm very glad that I did it at last. I've been wanting to do this for the past few months and only in the last month I got the guts and the enthusiasm to do it. So tell me in the comments if you want to do the same kind of challenge sometime in your life and if you've read any of the books that I've talked about in the video also let me know your opinions on them in the comments and if you found any new recommendations from this one tell me if you're going to read them and if you want me to continue on with any specific series I'll definitely try to continue reading them and if you did enjoy watching today's video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also share it to your friends and if you want to get more content from me do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.